Winning a chess game isn't something you can simply make happen. There is no outright winning strategy or forced win. If you simply hope that your opponent will do all of the work for you and make a blunder, you won't win as many games and you won't get very good. The only way to win at chess is by playing with sound strategies and gradually making your position better until you have an overwhelming advantage or your opponent can't handle the pressure and cracks. The key to improving your position is making your pieces active. An active piece is one that is full of potential and ready to jump into action. When you start a game of chess, none of your pieces are active. Most of your pieces can't even move. Your job is to get your pieces into the game and put them on active squares where they can attack, defend, and improve your control of the board. Let's take a look at a few positions and compare who has more active pieces. Let's start by looking at some opening moves and see which side does a better job activating their pieces. White begins the game with e4, controlling the center and already opening up lines for the light squared bishop and queen. Black plays h6. This pawn controls g5 but does nothing to help with development. White plays knight f3. The knight activates toward the center, controlling the d4 and e5 central squares. Black plays knight a6, developing a piece, but unlike white's last knight move to f3, black's knight on a6 does not control the center and only controls four squares, b4, c5, c7, and b8. Let's compare that to the knight on f3. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. Eight total squares, or twice as many as the knight on a6 controls. That's why it's important to develop toward the center. White follows this advice with bishop to c4, controlling the center and placing pressure on black's weakest point, the f7 square. Notice white is ready to castle on the very next turn. Black plays h5, moving the h-pawn for a second time, which does not control any central squares and wastes time that could have been used to develop a piece. White castles the king to safety and brings the rook toward the center. Black places a second knight to the edge of the board, reducing its square control again to only four squares, just like the knight on a6. White activates the rook with rook e1. The rook enjoys open lines in the center of the board. Notice the rook can help support the e-pawn's advance up the board in the future. Taking a look at white's position, you can notice that white has placed a pawn in the center, has developed pieces to active squares that help control the center, and white has also castled the king to safety. Black, on the other hand, does not control any of the key central squares, has two knights on the edge of the board, and black has not moved any pawns that would allow the bishops and queen to enter the game. White's position is far more active. Let's take a look at another position. Take a moment and compare white and black's pieces. Which side has more active pieces, white or black? Let's first look at white's pieces. Notice that white has three pieces in black's territory, the bishop on f6, the knight on d6, and the rook on c7. All of these pieces are very active. The bishop on f6 controls a lot of key squares right in front of black's king, and notice the bishop controls the entire a1 to h8 diagonal. This bishop also controls h4 to d8, controlling a lot of dark squares right in black's territory. The knight on d6 is excellently placed. It's putting pressure on f7, b7, and the bishop on c8. Notice white's rook on c7 is doing the same thing, pressurizing all three of these targets as well. The only piece that's not in black's territory is the rook on d1 and it enjoys a lot of open squares and also protects the knight on d6. Let's compare that with black's pieces. Black has no pieces in white's territory, and notice black has three pieces still on the eighth rank. The rook on a8, the bishop on c8, and the rook on f8. The only piece not on the back rank is the knight on h6, stuck in the corner. Notice the knight cannot move to f5 or g4 because white has pawns that would capture that knight. Black's pieces are basically paralyzed. 
take a look at the light squared bishop on c8. It has one square, d7, and it's already protected by the white rook. The black rook on f8 cannot move to e8 because of the knight, or d8 without getting captured by the bishop. The only piece that can move without getting captured is the rook on a8, and it can only move to b8, where it's not really doing much. So to take a look at this position, we can say white has very active pieces, and black has very inactive pieces. Let's take a look at one more position. Finally, in this position, is it clear which side has more active pieces? Let's take a look. Notice that both sides have pawns directly in the center, d4 and d5. Both sides have very active bishops. They both control kingside and queenside space. Both sides have queens directly behind those bishops, controlling good diagonals on the king side as well as queen side, and they're well placed in the center of the board. Notice both sides have rooks on the c-file, enjoying a lot of open squares. The only difference between the two sides is the rook on e1 for white has the e-file all to itself. Meanwhile, the rook on f8 isn't really doing that much for black. So black solves this by playing rook f to e8. Both sides have very active pieces. We would call this an even or balanced position. Now that you've learned how to identify active versus inactive pieces, it's your turn to practice activating your pieces.